And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. The economy. Some people are upset, worried, scared, freaked out. Some people um, are just uh, going merrily along. People like me. (laughs) Here's a story from the Baltimore Sun about the economy. Says here some 69% of workers... Take time off between Memorial Day and Labor Day. According to a new survey of 2,033 employees by the Workforce Institute at Kronos Incorporated, a workforce management firm. Of course, it says here, the challenge for employers is making sure there's enough staff to man the office, meet deadlines, and get work done. The Kronos survey found that 21% of employees have been denied vacation because a co-worker had already requested it. But it's becoming more difficult to go on vacation these days because of skyrocketing gas prices, increasing workload, and concerns over the slumping economy. And that's apparently applying uh, increasing pressure to workers to give up a vacation altogether. A new survey by career site Yahoo Hot Jobs found that 51% of workers plan to forego their vacation this year. More than 1,100 workers nationwide participated in the online survey. That's an increase from 45% of employees who did not use their vacation days last summer. Tom Musbach, senior managing editor at the job site, said the economic turndown is leading to layoffs and stretched resources, which in turn leads to increased workloads and pressure to improve performance. Muspock says that workers need a break more often than ever uh, to avoid burnout. So don't feel guilty, says the columnist for the Baltimore Sun. Take that much needed respite. I know I will, she says. Mm. Now, uh, I for one, though I uh, can afford to do whatever I want and go wherever I want, (laughs) I've decided to uh, blow off my next European trip. Because they just raised the price of my plane ticket by $2,000. And I'm not paying it. Also, uh, when I was in France, the cost of a euro, if you you have dollars, is ridiculous. And the cost of the products you buy when you're there are ridiculous as well. You could not find a a Coca-Cola or a a Coca-Cola light or a Sprite or anything like that. You couldn't find that for less than two euros. And that's uh, $3.20 for a Coke. And that's just a common product we all buy. Everything there was ridiculous. So as much as I enjoy going to France, much as I enjoy going to Italy, much as I love Spain and England, not happening later this summer. I'm going to stay in California this year. For the rest of the year, anyway. That's it. I'm not the only one. Uh, Dean J. D'Amelio sent me this from the Costco.com website. Homai Calrose Rice, medium grain, 50-pound bag. It's going for $24.33. By the way, the limit is 10 bags per member. So if you want more than 500 pounds of rice, you're going to have to go to Sam's Club or somewhere else. You had to see they have limits. Anyway, just talking about how the economy is affecting you, or if it's not affecting you, that's fine. 
1-800-5800. Tom is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. Stephen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 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 Hi, it's Stephen. Could you hear me? I already said that. Okay, well, I would like to tell you, Tom, and I don't, you know, I don't care if you get offended and all that, but, I mean, you, you know, you're rude and you're selfish, period. Oh, how am I selfish, sir? Okay, because you make fun of gay people and, you know, just because just the thing. When did I make gay. fun of gay people? You said they're stupid, you know. Oh, time. now, all right, you're just being an idiot here, and it's not no, funny, no, no, and you're trying to jerk idiot. my chain, but it's not going to work. Excuse All right. No, 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 no. Not going to work. Are trying to say that? Don't Not going to work. Okay, sir. You know, not going to work. Some respect. Never oh, said any okay. such thing, and you're not going to jerk no, my no, chain. You know what the problem is? No, I don't care. Know. I've got your phone number here, and at 3 a.m. when you least expect it, I'll, I'll pay you back in spades, sir. Excuse me? You heard what I said. I mean, okay, listen, Tom. You're, you know, you're rude to gay people. You're trying to change the subject. Right, right, you're, right. That's not right. You know what I mean? Because yes. you only care about yourself. Right, you right, right. All right. You know, That's son, your you son let me just explain now. something to you. You know, when I was 12 years old, I used to make calls like this to radio stations. And at 12, I was better at it than you are today. Well, I know every. To that I'm making this up. Yes, I do. Yeah, I know. I've made every crank call in the world, and you, you son, so you son, are an amateur. You're an amateur. You're not good at it. I suggest practicing with your friends. Maybe call some of the little old ladies in the neighborhood or something. Call people and ask if their refrigerator is running or if they have Prince Albert in a can. And once you get your act down. Then try calling radio I shows. I think you're whole radio station. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just amazing. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Jack of the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Long-time listener, first-time caller. Going great. Okay, so, uh, so I'm a car salesman, right? And uh, all I see every day is these big H2s, big Suburbans. Everybody's trying to trade them in. And they're upside down like ten, fifteen thousand dollars. They pay like ten thousand dollars over sticker on a Prius, and they think it makes sense to them. <laughs> ridiculous. Now, uh, what do people say when you tell them, like, well, uh, this is all you're going to get for your SUV? Well, they think it's worth more. They think the, the gas is only affecting them, not everybody else. I see. So, do they ever like walk out of there and go, "I'm taking my business elsewhere"? Yeah, they're pissed. They'll think they'll get more somewhere else. And we're like, you know, we go to the auction. They're 10000 under Wholesale Blue Book. These Take are your mouth. We're on the air. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I, I love it that these a-holes who've been cutting me off on the roadways and sitting there with their uh, caramel macchiatos on the highway there in the cup holder. I'm so glad they're getting their ass kicked. I think it's fantastic. They have all these fancy clothes, you know, fancy sunglasses, fancy cars. The credit's not so good. You know, they're... They don't own anything anymore. It's crazy. Right. They've got 17 iPhones, and uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to say, yeah, it's, it, we see it everywhere, especially here. I, uh, you're seeing it where the rubber meets the road, literally. Exactly. Wow, I like it. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jack. Oh, so, yeah, I just want to call and say, so what's up? Do you have any questions for me as, as a car salesman? Do I have any questions for you? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I asked you my question. My question was how do people react when you tell them their SUV is worthless? They flip. They flip. Hey, so I have a question about this $40 on a date thing. But we're going to do that on the uh, on a 101 segment rather than here because we're trying to do something different here. But thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Jeff on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Jeff. What up, Dad? How much up? Hey, I just, uh, I actually work for a credit union uh, based in the Northwest, and uh, I just want to talk to you. You mentioned something about the, uh, you know, call up, talk about how the economy is doing, how it's affecting you. It's personally not really affecting me at all. But what I am seeing is a hell of a lot more business, people coming in, cashing out their 401ks that have just dropped, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 percent in value and putting them into singular IRA money market accounts, certificate of deposits, that kind of stuff, you know, no risk investments. But they're cashing out after their, you know, 20, 30 years of investments have just dropped tremendously like they're never going to come back up again. And, and wait a minute, I, don't they have to pay a 20 percent penalty when they when they pull out early? 
Well, not necessarily. I mean, the IRS penalty only applies if it does not go into a qualified investment within 60 days, uh, retirement investment. But I thought you had to uh, keep it in there unless you left the company. I didn't think, like, for example, I'm sitting here at a company right now. I didn't think I could take the money out of my 401k and put it in my IRA right now. I thought I had to wait until I quit. No, no. It, well, it depends where it's invested. Some companies, if you're if you're uh, heavily invested in the individual company's stock, I mean, companies have different policies. But for the most part, if you're independently or not independently, but if you're invested through your 401k and an employer's plan in different mutual funds, for example, just if, if you're straight across the board, different mutual funds of different risk levels, you can roll that over. At most times, depending on when you're vested, different companies have different vesting periods. But really, I mean, you have, you have, well, the reason I was calling is because, you know, I love you. I listen to you every day on the way home from work. You just crack me up. And, uh, you know, a lot of people. Hey. Sorry, 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 sorry. Some of the dumbest questions out there. But I know people listen to you and take your advice. And you need to tell some of these guys that are later in years to keep their 401ks, keep their, keep their mutual funds there. Don't take it out. The market will go back up. They're going to lose so much money. Yeah, always. Uh, anytime you take your money out of a 401k, it should be to go into an IRA. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you got to wait for the right time to do it. You know, this the slump right now, everyone's free. Well, it doesn't really it. matter because there's no tax consequences uh, to selling at a loss if you immediately reinvest at the same lousy, depressed prices. Exactly. You've lost exactly. nothing. It's only if you have to pay fees, if you have to pay a penalty or you have to pay some kind of a fee. Yeah, well, yes, you're right. But, I mean, you figure you figure that if someone who's invested in a 401K or various mutual funds over a period of 20 years ends up in the red because of a downturn in the economy – and freaks out and pulls everything out. They have no chance for that to be going back up. This is well. That's if they pull it out and keep it out. But the, what I'm saying is, as long as you roll it right into an IRA, you're not going to lose a penny. No, but but if you if if you've already lost a bunch of money, it doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter because does matter let's because say we're... let's say you had a hundred thousand dollars in a four hundred one k that's now worth seventy five thousand, and you take out the seventy five thousand and you roll it into a to an IRA. You haven't lost that $25,000 permanently. When you reinvest, you're reinvesting at the same depressed prices of the stock market and those mutual funds as you left. Yeah, but the fact is, is that most good funds can, most good, but good, most good funds have a 10-year return of 10% or more. I would, you, anyone would be... But most 401ks charge all any? kinds of arcane fees. And then many times you find shares missing from your mutual funds in your 401k. If they're good funds, though, those those original costs, like the 5% cost that you have to pay to. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Return. I'm not talking about that. I am talking 401ks charge administrative fees above and beyond loads, above and beyond the expense ratio. They add fees on top of it. Yeah, but you're still netting an average. If you're if you've got good investments rolling, you should still be netting in between ten and fifteen. All right, but what I'm would, trying to tell you is, if you take money that. out today and then you reinvest it tomorrow, it's not going to make any difference. You're not going to lose any more than you would have lost, or make any more. You wouldn't have made any more than you're going to make now because you're reinvesting at the same prices. This is why there's only a few rich people out there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. That 1-800-5800-TOM. Megas on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Oh, it's Megan. I'm sorry. I, there's a typo on the screen there. <laughs> I wanted to say that I listened to you a long time ago, and I remember you talked about how there would be a huge glut of SUVs at some point, and I, I really think you did a good job warning your, your listeners about that. And uh, now it's all come home to roost, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Whenever I go to the store, I see a bunch of SUVs on the weekend with for sale signs on them all over the place, and it's just it's amazing. But I, I think it's good in a way because it will encourage people to live within their means, so... And I also well, it's not going to encourage them. It's going to force them. <laughs> That's true, but I, I really hope that housing bo that housing bailout doesn't happen because um, the Wall Street Journal had an article about how some senators got special deals through, like Countrywide and stuff, and they were kind of pushing this housing bailout. And I hope it just doesn't happen. 
Well, I hope we're not going to bail anybody out who's being foreclosed upon. You know what? Uh, the stupid should be uh, should be forced to learn from their mistakes. Right. And and they don't have to go to debtor's prison or anything. It's just they have to walk away and start over with their credit and wait, you know, several years, I guess, to clean it up. I mean, what do we do now? Bail out people who invested in the stock market? <laughs> bail out people who grew tomatoes and uh, they didn't water them enough? I and mean, what, what's next? I don't know. Can you pick me out Quiet Nine style? What style? Quiet Nine style. What's that? Elliot Spitzer style. Oh, yes, of course. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. It's one 800 800 tom Laura, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Long-time listener. Um, I would think that if you could write a book and educate as many people as you do, the world would be much better. Your demographic is young enough where you could really make a difference. Your financial information is right on all the time. I learned it the hard way. I made every mistake. Just like with women, I made every mistake in the book. But at least I had a steep learning curve. I learned. Exactly. I mean, kids, I've heard you tell young men who call up and go, Tom, what should I invest? And you're like, do your research. You you really hold people accountable for responsibility. And people say, oh, you just caught an easy break. You didn't catch an easy break. You are a person to be admired and learned from. And I'm not in your demographic. I'm an older woman. But I really just think that you are wise way beyond your years and you're helping so many people. I think your show is fantastic. And you get me to work in the evening every night and i just wanted to thank you for it thank you for that laura i appreciate the call it's juan on the tom like his show hello hey tom how you doing doing okay hey uh, i just want to comment on uh, how the economy has been affecting me uh, for me it's been pretty good i mean i've been working uh san diego i've been working out in uh, santa barbara as a matter of fact i'm out in santa barbara right now and what do you, what do you do juan i'm in a uh, construction business and, and business is good yeah, the business is good for me. It's good. I mean, I haven't uh, been laid off or I haven't stopped for, for about, uh, I'm talking about 10 years. So, well, good for you. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, when I heard you had those 20 acres out there in Santa Barbara, I said, hey, I'm out there right now working out there. But then I come to L.A. once a week and then go back. I mean, company pays my gas, full benefits. Don't have a problem, Tom. Glad to hear it. That's all I wanted to tell you. I mean, it's not affecting me. I don't know. Other people are probably getting more affected. They just weren't paying attention, and it's tough on them. It... Yes, it is. Ran out of steam. He ran out of gas. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Kevin on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. Hey, Tom, I get bummed out when I go to the gas station, too, and see these big prices. And then it dawned on me one day, I did the math, and I'm only paying 40 bucks a week more in gas. And I thought, you know, when you consider my overall net worth or my income, that's not a huge dent. I mean, it's a bummer to see it, and, and, but it doesn't really affect my lifestyle one bit. You're worse. paying an awful bummer. lot more than that per gallon for Starbucks. Yeah, that's true. But I'll tell you where it does bother me, though, is when I see the corporate profits at the end of the quarter and these guys, you know, these oil companies are making windfall profits of $400 billion last year. What's it going to be this year? $800 billion? Now, I don't believe in anything but a capitalistic system, but sometimes when things are products are inelastic or defensive, sometimes the government steps in and says, It is hey. not the fault of the oil companies, though. That's the thing that people don't understand, and it's part of the fact that people don't understand economics. They don't understand investing. Many people don't even understand that in their 401ks or their IRAs, they probably own stock in oil companies. And when a windfall profits tax is placed on these companies, uh, who do you think is going to be paying it? You. Yeah, well, I guess it is going to affect us all on that. And do you think the oil companies are going to lower gas prices? Or you think they're going to keep them the same if they're being taxed? Well, no, they, they'll increase them, of course. And they That's right. And they make a profit. You know, there's no doubt about it. I'm just talking about when things are inelastic, things that people have to have. But I'm certainly not... You don't have to have that much gas. You do not need as much as you use. That's very true. 
You know, as the far best as economy, way to prevent shortages of gasoline is to allow the price to be completely elastic and allow them to charge as much as they need to. Yeah, and then and then supply and demand will will take care of itself for sure. But one of the other things that bothers me about this whole system is people don't realize that Alan Greenspan is the one who got us in this huge pickle in this country and the fact that our dollars... No, I, I don't agree value. with that. It's the average moron who got greedy and thought he was going to be a real estate bear. <laughs> well, no. See, what happened is all the speculators shifted from the day trading market, and I know because I own a day trading firm, and they shifted to the real estate And it's not just market, day traders. Was... It's every moron out there. My um, ex-girlfriend. My ex-girlfriend wanted me to buy houses and condos so she could renovate them and flip them. She had no experience in the real estate business, and she didn't care. Right, but the problem, the reason that the speculators went to that is because we were facing deflation in the late 90s. The companies were expanding everywhere. They were selling everything they could manufacture, but they weren't making enough profit doing it. That's deflation. And then Alan Greenspan came in and said, let's fight this with an artificial asset inflation. And what does he do? He works... For, no, he doesn't that work is not what Alan Greenspan, Greenspan did. Alan Greenspan lowered interest rates after the 9-11 tragedy. Uh, yeah, so that, that the economy was, wouldn't completely peter out. Yeah, but the economy was facing a, a slowdown. We had corporate greed and scandal at the MCI. Stop with corporate. Run. This whole thing about corporate greed. Stop with the corporate greed. Uh, y y do you own any mutual funds? Do you have a 401k or a, a, an IRA? Many of all the above. Well, yes. great. Yeah, well, you better hope the corporations that you're invested in are as greedy as they can possibly be. Their job is to make as much money for you as possible. I used the wrong word. I meant corporate scandals, not corporate greed. We all should be greedy in corporation, corporations in the capitalistic system. But the point I'm trying to make here is that because Alan Greenspan had to fight the deflation, he created this artificial asset inflation by reducing the rates. That's all he does is just control the inflow and outflow of money. by reducing the Artificial rates, the asset inflation in the form of home prices occurred because right. your average yachts said, hey, if the uh, boy, if I can get an arm for 2%, I could buy this sucker and paint it over and then flip it. And not only those yups, but also the speculators. And that's why Same difference. This, remember in the stock market, the, the incredible I have no problem. By the way, I have no problem with people losing their homes. I think it's fantastic. And do you know why it's fantastic? Because there's plenty of deserving people with good credit and good jobs who've been shut out of the housing market because of the yutzes who've been driving up the price of houses. And now the people have patiently been waiting and sitting there just putting money away and renting apartments and hoping for the best. They can now all live in the houses that these morons uh, made impossible to buy for, for good people of good credit, good jobs who just didn't have enough money to buy a house. Okay, that's that's great that everybody was able to get a house, but now we're facing a situation here, just like in the stock market, it went up too fast, it had to crash, the real estate market has to crash, or our dollar will continue to devalue. I think it's great, I hope the market continues to go down, and I own two houses. Yeah, and I also do own many more than that, but I hope it comes down too because it's crazy. Do you know that the Federal Reserve is not even a national, a, a government entity? I don't even private? care. That you know what? That's 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 the Bill O'Reilly show. That's uh, Rush Limbaugh show. Nobody cares. <laughs> I, I don't watch either. This of those. is this has nothing about. to do with who's setting interest rates. It has to do with the average jerk out there who suddenly fancies himself an investor. Right. Yeah. The speculators. Same thing happened in the stock market. When we talk about speculators, people think you're talking about corporate individuals or professionals. No, no. We're talking no. about the average moron who lives down the block from you who suddenly owns six houses. The people who could throw money at the, at the, at the markets in the late 90s and make money, the same exact people we're talking about. No, here. we're not. We're not, estate. though. But we're not. We're not. We're talking about the average jerk, the average cab driver, the average person you sit next to at the bar who suddenly thinks, I'm going to buy 10 condos. I'm going to paint them all up and fix them and sell them and I make a profit. I don't see a difference between the day traders of the late 90s and the speculators in real estate. Because, because day trading requires at least a modicum of knowledge about the stock market. <laughs> no, it did not in those days. Well, no, no. It, you at least have to know where to set up a day trading account. I mean, knowing how to buy a house takes no knowledge at all.
Okay, well, perhaps um, because I was in the industry, it, it was easy for me to realize that. Well, trust me, the average person out there, if you said, hey, how'd you like to be a day trader, doesn't know what a day trader is, and if they knew what a day trader was, wouldn't know how to set up an account. Well, that fad's over, just like the real estate market is soon right. to be over. And I don't feel sorry I for don't know any. Where to go from here, but. I don't feel sorry for any of the morons who are losing their houses or their SUVs. Couldn't care less, because now the people who have good credit and good jobs who deserve to own real estate, now they're going to own it. Just like I just bought a second home myself, I waited through all these years. It's not because I couldn't afford to pay the inflated prices. It's because I knew there'd be blood in the streets, and I've been keeping my powder dry, waiting for my opportunity, and then I took it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's... The Tom Likas Show. That one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in. Just like some of the effects of the lousy economy and everybody freaking out about it. Let's say hello here to Todd on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Thanks for taking the call. Hey, uh, back to... Uh, I like it when you talk shop every now and then. You know, it kind of... Uh, Give some guys perspective on some, uh, you know, the way things are going and what direction to go in. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll tell you right now, um, as far as what's going on with this whole housing boom, I mean, what's the big surprise? I mean, you could have seen this thing a, a mile away, and you didn't have to be educated to see it either. Well, uh, that that's exactly right. I think it was pretty obvious that yeah, we were going to have these problems. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's nice that everybody got a house, but then again, it was like people were kind of building their life on an upside-down pyramid instead of there was no foundation. It was all this monopoly money, free money, this and that. And, uh, I mean, where were all these people back in 1991? I mean, I know it was different than it is now, but, I mean, still, there was a recession, and it was, you know, didn't these people learn from all that? Good question. You know? I mean, uh, I, all I can tell people is that even if you're upside down in your house and you you know you owe more than it's worth you know you just you're better off just getting a second job hanging in there because you know within 10 years you're going to wish you could buy a house for what houses go for today well uh, except that i think that's going to drop even further in the next few months i mean uh we are definitely in that window of opportunity for people who've been responsible and who've been saving uh but uh it could get even better Oh, yeah. No, I know, you know, there's always uh, somebody's loss of somebody's gain. And, uh, you know, as far as, you know, the gas prices go and everything on that note, I mean, you know, the oil, co oil companies, I mean, it's a business. They're in it to make money. You know, they have a right to make money, just like anybody who has their own business, entrepreneurs or whatever, you know, they got to do what it's, they got to do to make money. It's, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't know enough about you know how the oil companies run but i do know that they deserve to make money and uh and if they're not making money you think that you're gonna be paying less for anything that's petroleum based it's, uh, no you're gonna pay more right well i think that's true and uh i mean you know it's uh it's there there's you know there's a lot of a lot of bad out there a lot of people are, are going to lose their homes and so forth but uh you know, it's going to get worse. All you can do is you got to just plan and learn from, from the mistakes that you're making today. I think you're absolutely right, Todd, and I thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jimmy on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How's it going? No, pretty good. Um, yeah, first off, I just want to say, um, wow, I've been listening close to 20 years. I remember uh, when Ice-T was on your show with Body Count. I convinced my mom when I was 10 years old to go buy that tape for me. That's a long time ago. It sure was. Anyway, um, yeah, I think talking about the economy, um, uh, I'll bring up my girlfriend. I I'm 28. Um, but I don't know if that's acceptable in Tom Lickis, uh 101 terms. Um, but she's been out of work for about two months now, and uh, she was laid off from an airport. She's been submitting a resume. Over 400 resumes she submitted now and still unemployed. Mm -hmm. And what, luckily, does she, what does she do? Um, well, she was just out of college. During college, she was a geography major. She worked at an airport being a uh, weather observer. Um, she's looking for a much not such an extravagant position now, uh, administrative uh, 
an admin and an executive, or whatever you're going to call it. But, um, yeah, 400 resumes later, still nothing. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just not going very well. And, I mean, I, I make a decent living. I do make six figures, but I'm in the um, pound me in the rear bracket that, well, at least what I consider. And, um, yeah, I, I kind of want a pay cut. I figure if I take a pay cut, I might actually make more money, just the way things are working. And I'm consistently broke. And I rent an apartment in Culver City, so, you know, go figure. Yeah, yeah. Well, Southern California is an expensive place to live. Especially since nobody uh, lives near work and everybody is uh, driving somewhere far away. Very hard to set up any ride sharing or carpooling or any of that. Oh, yeah. No, I work in Glendale. It probably cost me $15 a day round trip, which isn't particularly a lot. But, uh, you know, over the course of time, it's a bit. And, uh, you know, food prices up, everything up. And yeah. I'm, yeah it, it's terrible. I don't, I don't care what anyone says. The economy sucks. It does suck, but uh, again, the fact the economy sucks is not something we can't plan for. I think a lot of people, because we had the 90s and then we had uh, the artificially low interest rates the last few years, a lot of people don't know what it's like to have a recession. They don't know what it's like when, uh, uh, when uh, unemployment goes up or prices go up. Well, right. I mean, but, I mean like, like you said, I think it was a few weeks ago, when we had Clinton, we had higher tax rates, but your money went further. That's right. So, yeah, I absolutely 100% And agree your dollar was worth more, too. Yeah, um, and uh, gas in, what, 98? I, I remember seeing for 89 cents. By the way, this is another way you're being taxed. Uh, you know, they love to talk about, Republicans love to say, oh, we're going to cut taxes. Uh, but by lowering interest rates and making money cheaper to companies... Uh, they also make uh, a, a barrel of oil more expensive for you. So essentially, uh, your taxes have gone up while trying to fund American business. That's how it works. Yeah, I kind of just see everything kind of writing on my back and everyone that's in my bracket's back. And, uh, and uh, Well, you know what? The next trend uh, should, though it won't be, uh, live beneath your means. Yeah, uh, well... As far as cutting things, I think that the extent of my cutting is I uh, smoke a cheaper brand of cigarettes, but... Uh, <laughs> what are you doing was, smoking cigarettes? Damn, I'm a retard. What do you expect? Well, that's, you know, what, what is it, six bucks for a pack of cigarettes now? I went from the $7 pack to the $5 pack, so, right. you know, I'm saving a, a whopping uh, $40 a month or so. Ooh-wee. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. You, maybe you try quitting now. Yeah, someday. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jesus. Anyhow, I don't, I don't know if you got it yet. Um, this is kind of endearing, though. I don't know if you have a George Carlin style. Um, we really don't. We really don't. We'll look into it. <laughs> a little too soon for us to get the work done. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here. Look at all these people. Eric on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Uh, hey, Tom, how's it going? Great. Hey, um, I, I wanted to bring up a point where you, uh, you were talking about earlier how um, you're glad people are losing their houses and things like that. Well, there's a story where a couple years ago when the marketing was go doing really well, my brother, you know, he's like a hard worker and he saved his money. He wanted to buy this house. And um, all these people that were uh, bidding against him, um, were like either real estate agents or I don't know realtor companies, whatever. They like just totally way you no know, outbid them, and it's just because they wanted to flip it, not because they wanted to buy it or, or live in it or anything. So you know, I was kind of you know angry that the, that they were doing that. But you know, I'm glad now that they're suffering just like everyone else for you know just buying it where you know people like hard workers they can't buy a house to live in, and so now that house. They can't even uh, they can't even uh, sell it. They can't sell it, and that you you see a, a for sale sign out there for the longest time, and they still can't sell. So I'm glad they're suffering too. Well, that's the way I'm looking at it. I mean, I think it's about time that people uh, finally have to live within their means. And there've been a lot of people who've just been overextending themselves with home equity loans and cheap money, and uh, now the chicken is coming home to roost. Yeah, they're, they're like they're like, they were like way outbidding him. I mean. They just, I mean, they're just bidding. I mean, I don't know why they're doing that. I mean, 
they just outbid him by so much, and uh, he, he, he just couldn't, you know, buy the house. And now I'm just glad they're stuck with that. So I just want to bring that up, and I'm glad they're suffering now because I, I keep on hearing people like them and other other friends that are, are like real estate agents are like making all this money. They're like so happy and saying they're making so much money, this and that. Well, I, you know, I bet you they're suffering now. So you know, it's all it's all good. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of that. Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. How you doing, son? Oh, fabulous. You know what? And I hope I can save this on the air. We're a bunch of pussies. We are a bunch of pussies. The economy is not bad. Swing by any Baskin Robbins. Go watch people at Walmart. They're buying nothing but crap. Every Baskin Robbins is filled up, everything. And you know what? That's crap we don't need. And people are still spending money on it. I don't get it. No, I, I think you're right. And you know what? I started a little company back when I was in the blue collar industry, and everybody laughed at me. And now I'm the one sitting high on the hog. <laughs> guess what I do? Do tell. I mow lawns. Really? And you know what? I offer these guys that I had two jobs. I had my corporate job, and I had my little landscaping job. And everybody that got laid off around me, I said, you know what? You're a friend of mine. I tell you what, ten bucks under the table. Feed your family. I'll make sure to make sure that you got some food and everything else while you, you know, looking for another job, they wouldn't do the work. Really? Hell yeah, because it's too hard. It's too hot. And I'm tired of all these little pussies sitting there crying, and guess what? I do own a diesel truck. I do own a bunch of large pickup trucks, and I guess what? Fuel price don't hurt me that bad. I totally understand. I thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Tom on the Tom Likens Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, um, you know, I've been enjoying the show tonight, and uh, I've been in and out of the commodities market off and on for 23 years. I have actually took the SEC exam in uh, 87, so I know a little bit about the market. And something I do know that's really amazed me is this book that came out almost five years ago that told about what's happening now. And people on the financial talk shows laughed and giggled at this man five years ago. And they're not laughing now. And his second book that came out uh, a little over a year ago is sold out. And they're listening who, to the who is this now? He had a book called How to Profit from the Coming Real Estate Bust. And it came out in August of 03. Well, plenty of people guess at this stuff and write books. And the vast majority of them are wrong. So I, I learned never to accept anybody as my guru. Well, I'm not saying he's a guru, but he didn't just guess it was going to bust. He wrote in detail how and why. And I understand. Was, and, and by the way, I, I do believe that uh, anybody with half a brain should have seen this coming. And uh, apparently people didn't. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, um, a lot of people that were into real estate, like I've got some relatives in North Carolina. I'm in Dallas, but I've got some relatives in North Carolina. And the economy, they're horrible. It's not nearly as good as Dallas, Fort Worth area. And uh, they're in and out of real estate and they're all crying. So they, they call me wanting to borrow money and wonder if I could help them out and asking how are things in Texas? Maybe they should move here. And you know what I tell them? I tell them that, you know, if you got bad ideas in North Carolina, they're going to be bad ideas in Texas, too. Oh, no doubt about it. Well, I love your show, and uh, these people whining and crying. See what the information's out there, like you've been saying. Sit down in front of the internet a little bit every night instead of in front of the TV. You might learn something. I think you're right about that. Good point, Tom. Thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. It's Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. Our show streams live on the internet. Go to our website. It's blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button, and frankly, you'll be listening live. The Tom Likas Show. Now.